So Elon, you are really quite unique, I feel, in being so interested in the long-term future of humanity. Well, I don't think I'm that unique. Um, you have an institute. Uh, <laughs> clearly, you're interested in that too. Well, I'm, uh, quite the <laughs> I'm curious, your interest in the far future of humanity, when did that begin? How did that start? Well, uh, I think it was when I, my, my interest in the future of humanity is, uh, I, I guess, as a function of reading a lot of uh, sci fi and philosophy as a kid, and, uh, and then. Um, and, and just sort of thinking about okay, what, what's what's important uh, to do? Like why should, why do anything? What's the meaning of life? Um, and you know, I came to the conclusion that what we really need to do is um, make sure that life continues into the future, um, and particularly conscious uh, life. Um, and and in doing so, we'll better we'll, we'll be better able to understand. The nature of the universe and um, and, and achieve greater enlightenment. Uh, One thing I really admire about you is you don't just talk about the future of humanity. You actually start companies and do things about it. So, what made you so audacious? Well, I don't really think of uh, these things as all that audacious. Uh, they seem like uh, natural things to do. Um, you know, it. Um, it's sort of a, more of a long-term optimization rather than a short-term one, um, and uh, yeah, I just um, not, not that I think you know everyone should be doing these things, but someone needs to do them. Um, so, so you know, so if I see that well, somebody is not doing this, and maybe I could be helpful, uh, then 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 I try to do something in that regard. Weren't there some people along the way though who told you that ah that's crazy to start a space company or a new electric car company or a well, solar company? Sure, I mean there are lots of people that said uh, that the likelihood of failure was extremely high um, and that it was a sure thing to do. Um, and when I started SpaceX, uh, one of my closest friends got a compilation of rocket failures and made me watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there were lots of people that tried to talk me out of it, um, and the joke was, you know, how do you, how do you um, make a small fortune in the rocket business? Well, you start with a large one. Um, <laughs> and um, I got told that joke so many times that, um, that I, obviously I knew the punchline, you know, so I'd just tell them the punchline and they would look at me like, is he serious? Or <laughs> Um, or I was like, or like, or like say, why did you start a rocket company? It's, it, it, like, it, um, I was trying to figure out the fastest way to turn a large fortune into a small one. That seemed like a good way to go. <laughs> um, but, but the thing is, like, I already thought the probability of failure was, was high, and that, and that, you know, with that, the likelihood of success was therefore low. Um, and uh, so this was not new information. I, I, I thought maybe SpaceX had, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent chance of success, and Tesla probably similar. Um, I thought I thought Solar City had a much higher chance of success, um, but probably still only you know I don't know 50 percent or something like that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean for for the longest time, I mean and, and SpaceX and Tesla almost didn't uh, survive. I mean it came very close to perishing as companies. Um, in, in, in 2008 and 2009 with the Great Recession, uh, it was an extremely close call. Looking ahead, what do you think are the technologies that are going to have the greatest impact on society? So I think there's, there's probably five, five categories. Yeah. Um, there's, um, and you know, I'm not even giving a particular order, but uh, Making life multiplanetary, uh, achieving sustainable uh, production and consumption of energy. Uh, um, obviously, the, 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 the internet as a whole. I mean, the continued growth of the internet. Uh, the uh, and then potentially, if we do this, reprogramming human genetics, and, and the fourth one would be artificial intelligence. Um, so, you know, working on the, the kind of the first three. But not not the last two. Um, 
I think, you know, the last two I think have the greatest potential to be a double-edged sword. So when you call uh, artificial intelligence a double-edged sword, do you talk a bit about the positive edge first? What do you see as the greatest benefits we can get from AI? Well, um, the, the, the greatest benefits from AI would probably be uh, in eliminating uh, drudgery, so like in terms of, or, or tasks that, 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 are, that are mentally boring, um, not, not interesting. Uh, there's arguably breakthroughs in areas that are currently beyond human intelligence or at least for now beyond human intelligence, I think we could probably solve them in the long term, uh, such as, um, you know, the classic sort of curing cancer and um, addressing diseases of aging, Alzheimer's and all these things. So there's, you know, insert, you know, various like intractable, intractable problems to human intelligence or currently what seem to be intractable problems. And then the, if you had something that was way smarter, it could solve those problems. And turning to negative uh, edge, right? Um, well, I think it, it's it's best to prepare for uh, to, to try to prevent a negative circumstance from occurring, than to wait for it to occur and then be reactive. So, and, and this is a case where the potential, the range of negative outcomes are quite, some of them are quite severe. Um, so, it's not clear whether we'd be able to recover from some of these negative, negative outcomes. In fact, some of the, certainly you can construct scenarios where um, recovery of human civilization does not occur. Um, and when the risk is that severe, it seems like you should be proactive and not reactive. I'm really quite curious why uh, you decided to make such a large donation, because 10 million is something that really enables a massive amount of research. Um, I don't think 10 million is a large amount of money for, for this subject area. Um, it should probably be higher. Um, but, but the, you know, it, it, there should be probably some much larger amount of money um, applied to AI safety um, in, in, in multiple ways. Well, I want to thank you again so right. much for this. It's uh, something we really, really appreciate and are eager to do great stuff with.